all right people how is all doing hope you're all well i'm uh just making this wee video but before i get into it um uh, sean atwood's dropped uh, the trailer for uh, part two of the podcast so cheers for that um the tablet ran out of charge halfway through it or something and i was demented trying to find the charger because uh, my son uses it the plug to charge his phone so i had to sit in the the living room couch with the uh, balancing the <laughs> the tablet on the arm of the couch with the charger plugged into the wall and it was a bit kind of off center of you shall we say <laughs> but um got it done anyway so that will be that will be for the 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 entire thing will be I think it's on in Sunday so um had to turn the angle of the camera in here as well because like see sometimes when I'm doing these videos and like the 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 sun shining in here is a pain in the ass man and obviously um it's just it's just the angle and, and the light and that so it's, it is a pain but that's what it is isn't it um so. I've got to talk about somebody that probably a lot of you have most likely heard of if you've done time right. A guy called Martin Hamilton, right? And he's actually pretty. He was a notorious case back in the day, like talking maybe 90s, maybe 80s, all that shit, right? Dangerous guy. No, I'd actually cross paths with him one time, right? So see, when I absconded, and oh, so see, like when I was uh, being in the process of moving between care law secure unit and appointment young offenders, and I absconded, right? Which I've already spoke about before, and when the police took me taking Head Road Police Station, I went to Glasgow Sheriff Court the next day, right, and obviously, I'm already serving a sentence, right, they didn't take me straight to jail, because I was like, Section 208 convicted young person, it's called a CYP, um, and, when everybody's waiting, to be, so obviously everybody's waiting to be processed, in Glasgow Sheriff, now, if you're just in half the streets, the way it works is, you're either getting remanded or getting bailed, depending on what you're in for, the mood of the judge, eh, the sheriff, should I say, whatever, right? Um, and if you get remanded, you go into what's called cell 10, cell number 10, it's like, it's like something out, kind of one of the American films, right? It's a way down, kind of near the, the underground car park. It's like the first cell on the right. As you're coming in for the loading dock, the underground car park, right? Half the prison vans. And it's just a big row of bars, right? And with them benches in it, be like, bits to piss in urinals, man. It's, oh, it's, <laughs> it's, no, it's no nice. So, uh, obviously I got put in there to go up to Berlini and then on to wherever, the young offenders uh, park. And uh, Martin Hamilton was actually in that cell, right? But I didn't have a clue who the fuck he was. And um, this cell is fucking packing, right? I mean, packing, like, there's guys crouching down in corners. And I don't mean that like they're in fear. I just mean it was that. It was like a fucking tin of sardines, right? Everybody just packed in here. And there was him and one of his co accused right? Um... His name is Wally. Um, so they're just holding court in this cell, right? Like everybody's like kinda deferring to them and laughing at shit they're saying. It's just all this kinda Well it seemed to me I'm a sixteen year old boy, what the fuck do I know this? This was like obviously I had went I'd been admitted to Berlin before as a fifteen year old the year prior to this, but I'd never touched the halls or anything, so I just made it to the reception, done a week and long again, then a year doing care a lot, and then all this shit happened, right? So I'm, I'm in Glasgow Sheriff Court, and um, we're on, as I say, we're on this fucking cell, right? 
And back then, you used to get a lunch. It was pie, chips and beans. So Glasgow Sheriff Court must have had this fucking contract with a local chip shop. These fucking 6,000 pie, chips and beans, the fucking guy must have made a killing, right? You get it in this wee polystyrene box with a cup of cup of tea but we all called it diesel it was fucking i still drank it no gonna lie it was like fucking something that i'd expect to find in a cafe in baghdad or something <laughs> um no sugar in it but i don't take sugar anyway so fuck it easy come easy go but um we're all in this cell right and everybody's at their their pie chips and beans and fucking <laughs> This, this, this young offender, but he's fucking huge, right? He was for the south side, six foot tall, built like a fucking, built like the side of a, a house. Huge. He's got put in the cell, right? And I think they must have thought he was older than he was because he didn't look like a young offender at all, right? But he was a young offender because I know that because I was in the young offenders with him after this. So, he's come into the cell while we've already been sitting here for fucking ages and he didn't get, like, let into the cell by the screws, like, with, like, three other different guys. He just came in the cell, so it's kind of like everybody just looks at you, right? So, I'm sitting on the wooden bench next to a boy for my, no, my area of canvas line, but another area of canvas line. This was kind of the first time I'd ever met him. Um... And that Martin Hamilton is obviously called Hammy, right? Obviously, there's other guys known by other disparaging nicknames. Um, but I don't know if... Um, I didn't see a lot of people can I say in it. Tell me if you get me, you know what I mean? Uh, so fucking... My, the boy from my for Canvas Lang's like to me, see him there. He, he's a dodgy cunt. He's a, we say a dodgy cunt, it means like... Don't fuck with him, but obviously the media and all that call him fucking the black hill butcher. He's not even fae black colour. I think he fucking grew up in Mary Hall or something and moved to fucking Anderson or something like that. Don't know. But anyway, he's no fae black hill. I do know that. Um, so this other boy has been let in. He's, like, he's missed the lunch because obviously what time he took into court, he's missed his fucking lunch and... As you, as you probably know yourself, it's even the same out here if you're not getting something you're, you're entitled to. It's, and, it, and it's magnified in prison. If you're the only one who doesn't get something, then you've got to kick off for that. You're not going to be happy, especially fucking food. No matter miss out on your dinner, know what I mean? Sitting in there all day, just getting ground into a fucking nub. <laughs> know what I mean? Um. So when he's came in, he's done that to the screw. The, it, so the, it wasn't the Reliance security guards back then or GRS, what, f fucking whatever they're called now, I don't know. Back then it was Strathclyde Police that um, that ran the courts. So it was them that were unlocking cells, taking you to the courtroom, taking you to the fucking toilet, all that stuff, right? So he's been like that. He wanted the coppers. What's happening with my pie, chips and beans? He's like, I'll get it done to you. So, while the coppers away getting his lunch, if, um, Martin Hamilton and his co accused are just uh, sitting fucking. Ha actual Martin Hamilton was actually pacing up and down the cell, wiping his brow constantly, wiping his brow, right? And um, his co accused, while he was sitting on the bench, at the far end of me, so I was like facing him, but obviously I'm at the other end of the cell, right? And fucking, uh, he's just, they're just la laughing, joking, like fucking. I said, so the coppers came down with that boy's pie chips and beans, right? And he's gave them it through the bars and he's opened it, so he's the only one in this cell with food now, <laughs> and fucking. Martin Hamilton's co accused has done that to him. You gave me that roll big in. And he's just fucking took it and lifted it right out of his fucking lunch, right? And the boy done that. 
ask for it, don't fucking take it, see like that, right? And eh, uh, <laughs> Mark Hamill's co done that, Arr! and just like fucking <laughs> took a bite out of it, like a fucking maniac, right? And eh, uh, the two of them have just started punching fuck at each other, right? And eh, uh, it's pure kicked off in this cell, and then Martin Hamilton's fucking try to grab this guy's arms behind his back while his co-accus is pure fucking scudding him, right? And uh, in the midst of all this, right, I didn't know Hammy's co -accused. his son was like kind of sitting next to the boy I was sitting next to, and he's jumped up on the fucking bench, grabbed the guy with the fucking helm, just booted him right in the face, man. And then hunters of fucking coppers have came. And, eh, uh, but gee, the boy is Drew, he was fucking, he was gone for it, do you know what I mean? I've been in that position myself in jail, see, he's fighting three people he's sell, trust me, see, unless you're fucking XSAS fucking, or, or fucking multiple black belts and fuck knows what, do you know what I mean? Even in a, an enclosed space like that. Fighting three people's a fucking struggle. Fighting two would be a struggle, do you know what I mean? Fuck sick. Um but pff, hats off to him, fuck knows what I've done. <laughs> fuck know what I mean? But um or the, or the coppers have just fucking came because they must have seen it in the camera outside the bars, right? And they've all came running down and fucking they've opened the fucking they've unlocked the the cell and they've dragged that boy out. He's pure heavy shouting abuse at them and all that and fucking but then, see, after they left, it was as if they were all pumped up on this. It was as if they were all even laughing and joking even more, right? So that was the first time I had ever uh, seen seen who this guy was and all that, right? And uh, the, So that was November 1998, right? So he would have been just getting took off the street then because I got out in October 2000, right? And I remember one day I was sitting in my house and I had a copy of the Daily Record in front of me and he was on the front page um, getting led out of court um, in cuffs. Now, for some year it have maybe never heard of him or don't know the ins and outs of who this guy is. I'm going to read a couple of wee things that obviously are media reports. So I would just like to say I've never had conversations with him never asked him about anything he's in for or anything at all like that. Um he's not he wasn't somebody I would have kinda been run. Um obviously he was be him being a lot older than me, but obviously I think he was he was in Glen Oco and run about the time I was there, but he was in the other hall. I was in Abercrombie and he was in Harveston. So says Martin Hamilton was a feared gangland enforcer who began a reign of terror in the capital that left even hardened, hardened detectives sickened. So obviously he's from Glasgow, right? But um, apparently what they were saying was he'd moved to Edinburgh because, like, there was a lot of people in Glasgow. And I'm talking about, like, people that were involved in serious organised crime who just wouldn't have a lot to do with them, they wouldn't maybe give them work or whatever, I don't know, they wouldn't want to, maybe because they felt like, listen man, you just bring heat and maybe we don't like your, don't like the cut of your fucking face, whatever. Known as the Black Kill Butcher, Martin Hamilton was a feared gangland enforcer, often cited as Scotland's most hated criminal. In the late 90s, he moved to Edinburgh and began a reign of terror that left even hardened detectives sickened. A gay predator, Hamilton would routinely rape young men, sometimes at gunpoint, as punishments and to satisfy his perverted sexual appetites. Hamilton abused and tortured his victims as part of a plan to take over parts of the city's drug trade. Eventually jailed in 2000, Hamilton was described by a senior officer as, quote, one of the most evil men I have ever come across in my service, possibly second only to a child serial killer, Robert Black. Now that's fucking frightening, man, because...
somebody like Robert Black wouldn't like scare me in the sense like I would feel he would try and hurt me because I know the type of people he would victimise. I would victimise him to be fair. Um, just saying it like it is. Um, but obviously if I was a child and it was young boys he was targeting, I would have been a I could have been a victim of somebody like him because he was prowling the U the the entire width and bread for the UK when I was a small boy and it was an absolutely horrendous case. So to be compared to somebody like that, you're second only to him, you're the worst person I've heard of. like that's fucking that's oh fucking hell. Um released from prison, Hamilton returned to his criminal ways but went missing in April twenty fifteen. So, basically, I'm getting a wee bit ahead, right? So, he, I'd read that Martin Hamilton had actually, he's, like, he's been fucking, like, I'd heard a mad story. Somebody in the jail told me this, but I can't mind who it was, right? He was sitting in a motor. Now, this may or may not be true, right? So, I just want to say that, because obviously this is, like, prison rumour mill or whatever. Um, But... So he was sitting in a motor or something and um or he was just walking down the street or something and somebody just went up and blasted him at close range with a shotgun or something and he's had to fucking go to hospital so i think he's had a few attempts on his life as well he's not just been like fucking swanning about like nobody fucking with him and all that obviously he's angered some people in that as well um so uh hold on so Born in Mary Hall, right, this is a daily record article, born in Mary Hall, Glasgow, Hamilton was extremely close to his beloved mother and later hated the thought that she would learn of his heinous acts he was accused of. A source who knew Hamilton since the 90s said, Even as a teenager, Martin was feared and hated. His fellow school pupils would try to avoid him. If he was getting on the school, pu the school bus, kids at the back would get out the emergency door. Martin hated his own sexuality and I don't think he ever came to terms with it. He despised it being discussed. People would see him with groups of rent boys and he'd come on strong to young men. Then he'd ask you, how could you say he was gay? But during his criminal career, he used his sexuality as a weapon. Hamilton wasn't considered a Mr Big in Glasgow in the 90s, dealing in drugs and participating in an armed robbery. I heard that they uh, try to rob a place up the town or something. Don't know where I heard it, but I've seen it. Um, most of that city's gangsters gave Hamilton a, a wide berth due to his unpredictable and volatile nature. Standing only five feet five inches tall with a chubby frame, Hamilton cut a shambolic figure and was known for his, quote, turbocharged talking at a mile a minute. I think that's just a, a fucking West of Scotland thing, to be honest with you. Um, they say we talk fast, don't it? But a number of criminal cases against him in Glasgow collapsed due to witnesses being afraid to testify. The source added, Martin was a lone wolf. He had some pals, but no strong allegiances to any particular gang. No one wanted to work with him, really. He was definitely Scotland's most hated criminal. Probably because of the sexual abuse he was known for. I think he was a true psychopath. With his options in Glasgow dwindling, Hamilton set out for Edinburgh in a bid to muscle in on its drugs market. He focused on the west of the city, particularly areas such as Broomhouse, or Broomhouse as you say over there I think, Wester Hills and Sight Hall. Detectives from the then Lothian and Baldur's Force admitted they knew little about Hamilton when he arrived. But a string of shocking assaults against low-level dealers who owed him money would bring Hamilton to their attention. Obviously because he's thinking they're not going to report me, are they? Because that's quite, that's quite a common thing. Like If you're seeing like, true crime, like if somebody's selling drugs, like, and somebody thinks they can take it for you, they'll just fucking, they'll get a bash man for you know what man, you're lying turkeyed up, where's the fucking goods? No good mate, fuck that shit. 
Uh, in fact, his activities, activities were so vile that police chiefs quickly put up a surveillance team from their major crime unit on a round-the-clock watch. The discovered teenage dealers were supplied with heroin and ecstasy by Hamilton, but faced horrific retribution if they failed to deliver the cash. Wart Hamilton even became infatuated with one of his dealers who was forced into hiding to escape his attention. In one incident, one of Hamilton's minions cut off a young man's finger and tried to gouge out his eye with a teaspoon. Fuck. Uh, officers also identified an Edinburgh publican targeted for extortion by Hamilton. The businessman said, I would rather pay him another 30 grand than give evidence against him. Another 30 grand, so he took 30 grand probably. But Hamilton's downfall came when a teenage couple bravely stood up to him in court. The girlfriend and boyfriend were held captive for 11 hours in a flat in Anderson, Glasgow, during which they were scalded with boiling water and stabbed through the face by another co-accused. I don't know if that's the same guy that he was in court with court with that day I was there but um because he was he's no named in any of these articles so the victims were then forced to stand in a bath so they would not drip blood onto carpets see when see when I read that I'm not gonna lie I just had a mad vision in my head stop imagine that was you standing there and that these maniacs have got you in a gaff just stabbing fuck at you and torturing you and you're storing in a fucking cold bath so you don't fucking mess his carpet up, know what I mean? <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, I so I read that about the bath. Um, the winners to testify allowed detectives to revisit Hamilton's victims in Edinburgh and some agreed to provide statements. So basically I think when that boy and that couple have testified it's opened the floodgates for everybody coming forward which usually happens you see that happening in a lot of cases like one per that everybody's like shocked or scared or ashamed into silence right and then um when one person just goes no what fuck yes man i don't care if you're calling me a grass a this a that what fuck you man you <laughs> your time's up do you know and like at the end of the day, like, see when you're living any sort of life like this, if you're just, like, it's what, it's what somebody in shots one says to me, be careful how you treat people on the way up, because you don't know who you're going to meet on the way down. Do you know what I mean? And there's good karma and there's bad karma. You know what I mean? Um, in 2000, Hamilton was found guilty of 11 out of 14 charges involving the sale of drugs abduction, assault and torture. Judge Lord Kingarth told Hamilton he took, quote, sadistic pleasure in the infliction of pain and the inspiration of real ter terror, so inspiring terror in people. He passed a life sentence with a minimum recommendation of nine years, so I think that's like an IPP, as they call it in England, but up here we called it an OLR, Order for Life Wrong Restriction. Basically, it's a discretionary life sentence, not a mandatory one, the distinction being mandatory life is for killing people and all that, and the other one is just for, like, if you're just an incorrigible offender, or a seemingly incorrigible offender. Um. The six-week trial was held amid tight security in Inverness as Hamilton had walked free from 12 previous high court trials because witnesses were threatened. 12 high court trials? Fucking hell, man. Know what I mean? Those who testified were placed in pol police protection schemes. Um, a source said... So it says Hamilton allegedly abused prisoners while behind bars. Now, as I said before, when I was in Glen Oco, he was in another hall and I never kind of heard anything. Obviously, it, it, it might have been up to shit because, as you know yourself, man, some people go to jail and don't get better, they get worse. It says uh, prison officers would threaten people, like, threaten prisoners, like, if you don't toe the line, we'll get Martin to you and all that. Maybe they did, you know, like the younger ones, because... I remember in Pullman, 
uh, that screw off long the boil and water it threatened me with another inmate but this boy was like 21 but he wasn't like going about fucking sexually abusing them they or torturing them day. Um, and that guy actually got threatened off someday um, but it wasn't me obviously I was only 17 he was 21 he was a lot older but I think he ran into some problems he's in um, so anyway <laughs> Hamilton was released from HMP Shots in September 2014. So in September 2014, I was still in Low Moss, right? By the following April, so April 2015, he had disappeared. Now remember, he's out on life license. An arrest warrant was issued after he breached parole conditions by failing to turn up at court. Detectives were trying to establish his whereabouts when his remains were found. A dog walker had stumbled across his grisly grave. A post-mortem revealed Hamilton, 53, had suffered serious injuries and died soon after he was last seen. So basically, he was uh, lured somewhere and basically beaten, fucking stabbed, fuck out of um, all this shit, right? And the funny thing is, right, see when I was in Low Moss, um, there was a rumour going about that he had been murdered before it became public, right? And I find that quite... I don't know. Because as I've always said, see any time a murder happens in Glasgow, right? Or a big, a big bank or whatever, see something hardcore, I can guarantee you someday in Berlin he knows about that before the coppers day. Um... And that 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 was I've all I've always said this because obviously people talk and they don't tell them they or that shit right. And I remember I was lying in my cell in Low Moss one night and I was watching Crime Watch right. So this is after all the, people are saying, Hammy's been murdered. Hammy's been murdered. He's dead. Hammy. No, well they weren't saying murdered. They were saying dead right. So there's a distinction here. Being dead doesn't necessarily mean you've been murdered, right? So everybody is saying he was dead, right? And then I remember I was lying in my cell one night and I was watching Crime Watch, right? And uh, they were doing an appeal for his whereabouts. So they didn't know where he was. They were looking for him. And see when his picture, his picture came up on the screen. The guy next door must have been watching this because all I heard was... Oh, what? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> fucking hell, man. Just, it made me laugh, I'm not going to lie, just because, like, a lot of people were saying he he died, right? So, um, it says here that he's be all they found was his skull and his spine, so he'd been fucking lying dead in a shallow grave in West Lothian somewhere. In a, in a, like, no, a forest, you know what I mean? Let's, uh, t wood, trees, woods, no, um, pan breed for about eight months. So, obviously, the elements and animals maybe have fucking done, done the business on them, like nature's took its course. Um, the source said Martin got involved with this drug deal after being released. He had few other options because no one would work with, the, would work with him. He was too hot for everyone, but he got greedy and ripped the guy off. That's why he was killed. Um, in March 2017, the man accused of his murder was freed from jail because he was dying. Liverpool-born James Farrelly, 53, returned to his home in Blackburn, West Lovie, and passed away a few days later. Um, so for what I understand, for the reports in that, um, the guy who, who murdered Hammy was fucking terminally ill. So it's like, pff, what you got to do to me, and it fuck's sake, man, I've got a bigger sentence to face than that you've got to fucking hit me with. You know what I mean? Pff, madness. But, um, just shows you, see, like, like, living this, this kind of life. Obviously, my life wasn't as fucking, like, bad or as serious as this, but it just shows you, like, if you... See if you're just committing the most horrendous acts on people and like 
no doing it nice for people, you're just always fucking looking for an angle, looking for how can I get one hour on you, um, what can I get out of this, what can I gain for this, everything's an angle, like, your life's got to be shit, do you know what I mean, and even though I, I, I didn't think like that, as a kid, like, I wasn't always looking to get one hour on people, like, if you were nice to me, I was, I was pretty alright, but if my buttons were pushed, I'm not going to lie, I had a temper and all that, and, um, as I've said before, been on receiving ends, and the, I've obviously dished it, so, no sitting, can I paint myself as hard done to a victim, obviously, do you know what I mean, but, that kind of criminality is another level. That's that's another level of something that I'm not used to. That's the kind of shit my mum's my family would be out to people. And I've just no fucking... I just don't want to be around anybody like that. Do you know what I mean? And it's quite weird that you think to yourself... You've actually crossed paths with somebody like that. Who... His life... I wonder what he would have thought. If somebody had I went to him and said, see, when we were in that cell, look, this is how you're going to end up. Jinky would have changed his ways. I don't know, but because um, they say that when you're that type of personality, but the age he was then, say he was in his 30s then, it's pretty, it's pretty much set in stone by that point. So... Some people would argue I got what was coming, but do you know what? I'm not going to, can I say, did or didn't I? Because I, I have what kind of mixed feelings about a lot of this shit, because obviously, in any scale you want to look at it, hurting people still hurting people, do you know what I mean? And people can say, if you've hurt any, like, even the shit I've done, right? Ah, you should still be paying for it. Well, do you know what? You've got, I'm, I don't take offence at that. But let me ask you this then, if you think that, see the people that have stabbed me and never done a danger, what do you think of that? Know what I mean? Do you think they should be always paying for it? Um, I was just the daft fuck that always got caught for what I was doing. But as I say, I didn't get caught for everything, but the things I got caught for, I'd done a lot of time for it, and rightfully so. No got to sit and say, oh, you, I, I'm no, it's no me, you know what I mean, but in some ways I must all pine for shit, but that's just the cross I need to bear, you know what I mean, and um, just the fucking way it is, maybe that's what separates me from people like him, um, and she, she is an, ad, an, an added kind of note to this, <laughs> One of Martin Hamilton's closest friends, for back when he was like that, was um, murdered coming out of a pub up in the East End, maybe around about that time that he got killed. He was a young guy, got fucking... young guy, about 28, done him in, man. You know what I mean? And see, see my point is... See if you're just going about being violent, constantly just engaging in violent behaviour. And I mean, mindless violence, there's tactical violence, and there's just mindless violence, right? And when I say tactical violence, I mean like fucking, like, war and all that, right? That's not what I, I was out doing. Mine was mindless violence, like, fucking shit like that. But what I'm trying to say is, like, if you're going about and back in the day and just hurting people not see see if you're just continuing to live like that like there's some young guy just fucking murdered him know what I mean so you're just sitting thinking like Phew, fucking hell man it's just a big evil roundabout do you know what I mean so <sighs> madness um so I hope that wasn't um, too morbid obviously I came on and done that funny story last night while I could fucking remember it because somebody jogged my memory. <laughs> fucking the Sopranos, know what I mean? <laughs> Too funny. Um, so, 
got in my class tonight, so um, I hope you all have a good night. Um, might come back. Doubt I'll be back on later because I've got my class. I need to take my son to his class as well before that. So, um, I doubt I'll be back on later. But um, check out that trailer that Sean just put on if you want. Do you know what I mean? Um, might find it interesting. Uh, for any that have watched part one, so. Uh, take care and um, I'll see you next time I'm back on catches